are you recording again? <laughs> wow. you got to tell me. You look at on-air light, Andrew. All right. What are we doing here? No problem. Um, welcome to episode 33. It is episode 33, as we established in the first poor opening that we did that we just recorded over to do our second poor opening of the night. That's all right. I need you, we're going to need everybody to bear with us a little bit tonight because um, we didn't make show notes. Yeah, we're, we're not changing so the format. We're not changing the format, but we're shooting from the hip. So we're winging it because we were busy this week, and obviously we started on a on a on a, on a pretty high note there with but we got two the coffee, two failed openings, and not not our normal uh, ultra professional selves. Unfortunately, ah, whatever. Life goes on. You want free content? Sometimes it's gonna suck. <laughs> whatever. Anyways, so what's going on, Andrew? What's going on this week with you and the world of cars? Not. Too much. So after last week's episode, after we recorded it, usually the day after I spent some time working on cars, I went to wrap up the 99 Montero and I was going to start driving it. I changed the coolant temp sensor. I think we... Yeah, maybe, we discussed that last we week. We discussed that. that yeah, the it was like negative 40 degrees. Yeah. So I put a brand new one in and I plugged it in and realized that the pigtail had separated at the connector. Which is pretty common. Yeah. Almost 30-year-old wiring. It's brittle. And you could have hacked it together if you wanted to, but... I could have. Well, it broke off so close to the connector that there was no wire to connect it to. Right, but you could have made, like, a, your own connector with a couple of, you know, just spaded ends and called it a day. But... No, no, it's not like a first-gen or, like, a DSM one. Like, an early DSM one that has the two spades. Oh, it doesn't have the spades on it? No, it's like a proprietary connector. Oh, okay. It, which, luckily, uh, there is... I'll plug them because he was very nice. It's SheridanEngineering.com. Sheridan at the hotel? Sheridan. Sheridan. He sells a bunch of connectors for first-gen DSMs, second-gen DSMs, 3000 GTs. So, Which is probably the same as a second-gen DSM. Parts bin engineering. Yep. It's uh, the coolant temp sensor on a Montero is the same as a second-gen Eclipse. Yeah, which makes sense because on the earlier ones, like the one I was just describing, they were all the same too. So yes. whether it was an eclipse, so or they staring. share a lot of connectors. So if you need a connector for your first gen DSM, your second gen DSM, your Montero, you should go to that website, check it out. Uh, you can email him like with a picture of the connector, and he's he like knew right away what I wanted. Does he make new ones, or does he just no? Have he buys old, you can new old stock. you can source all these. No, they're not new old stock. They still make them. In fact, doing a lot of Googling around, this connector is the same that's used on some Toyota sensors, too. Oh, okay. And you could get pigtails, like on eBay. I did kind of find them, but they were, like, way more money and took way longer shipping. So it's probably just, like, you know, here in the United States, a lot of companies will use an AC Delco connector, whereas in Japan, they use whatever brand the, name connector. These are all uh, Tyco connectors. Okay. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. They're, like, Amp Tyco. So it's like TE. So you can actually look them up online if mm -hmm. you know what you're looking for. Because uh, I got, when I rebuilt the Gallant harness, I had to source a couple of connectors, especially there was a couple of broken ECU connectors. Yeah, I remember that. So I was able to remove the pins from those and actually plug the old wires into new connectors. They're not the same color. They're not yellow. They're gray. But as long as they I'll lose points as long on as the they, concourse. As long as they function. Yeah, the concourse, they pull the kick panel down and look yes, at the ECU. exactly. Well, they check the ECU number, they'll realize it belongs in the Eclipse anyways. That will here, be the, screwed. That is the concourse of the future. <laughs> I guess so. But even now, if you go to a concourse, they don't pull out the fuse panel and make sure you're using proper fuses. I, so. No, they do. I, I'm i willing to bet you they do. Like like West Coast concourse, like Car Week concourse, I believe they do. I think only if it comes down to a points battle on something. I think is what it is. Yeah. I think people I get that crazy. Though. I can't imagine being that crazy. Do you have like a Paul Russell car? Speaking speaking of which, yeah. speaking of which, um, I've been on the road a lot lately, like yeah. locally doing appraisals. Yeah. Um, for damp crash damage cars. Yeah. Um, and there is the restoration shop in Essex. Yeah. Um, and I have seen on the road in the past two days, in all the glorious, like my windows are down, I can hear them coming, a um. 300 SL Roadster. Yes. Driving. And like a 62 Ferrari, like I don't even know what model. I meant to look it up and I didn't. 
just driving down the street. Well, his like, specialty always was 300 SLs. SLs, yeah. yeah. But, like, it's just driving down the street and seeing these cars drive by just mm-hmm. kind of blows your mind. Yeah, it does. Sorry, off tangent there. They just... It was, I, I was blown away both days. Yeah. I couldn't get my camera out fast enough because I was driving, unfortunately, but... I know, but that... So, back to the, the connectors thing, though, we... Maybe we touched that episode, like, with the cars that we're into, the 80s and 90s cars, that's yep. going to be a thing is electrical restoration, I think. Oh, 100%. It yeah. already is. There's yeah. companies that well, you can send out, like, digital clusters to or LED taillights to have them repaired. Yeah. And uh, that website, he actually makes some sub-harnesses for DSMs. Replacement harnesses? Some sub harness stuff, oh, yeah, that's like new cast plugs, stuff like that. Whatever, it's ne- necessary stuff like yeah. fuel injection plugs and that. Yeah, so. and and there is a couple other broken connectors on the Montero, which that just happens from people working on the truck. Yeah, and heat cycling it. under the hood, yeah. plus heat cycling on that particular one being an Arizona truck. Yeah, so there's a couple broken ones. I mean, they function, but I'll eventually get to replace them so they have the locks on them. It's like a pet peeve of mine that all the stuff has working locks. Right, you had to hear it click when you plug it in. Yeah, exactly. sure it's not yeah. going to fall off yeah. down the road. Yeah. No, I agree with you. It's, it's nice yeah. to have that. So speaking of engine work, so our buddy Joe with the lifted Forester, you may have seen some pictures on our Instagram page. The car, it's got a, it's a 2.5 turbo. So it's a dual overhead cam EJ2.5 with the turbo. It's an 08 Forester XT. Apparently they are notorious for burning exhaust valves. I guess the NA cars... We'll go through head gaskets. Okay. The two five NA cars? Yep. And the turbo cars like to burn. So most of the NA cars, I think, are almost always single overhead cam. Stephanie Subaru was like that. So it actually didn't, her car didn't need head gaskets, but it was sort of a prophylactic repair. We were doing the timing belt. Prophylactic. Yes. Preventative? Yes. You can say prophylactic. I don't know this. I don't, I, don't, I don't know this for a fact, but okay. Yes, preventative. Yeah, you can say it that way. Uh, okay. They sip my coffee. I'm. I'm not going to dispute something that I don't know. I mean, it's to prevent disease. Like it's a, a pro. Like, okay, check me. Anyway, I'm, I'll I'm, go on. You check it. I'm not. I. I, I don't. I don't even know how to spell it. I don't think. Uh, if you just type it into Google, it'll figure it out for yeah, you. Probably. But I don't think it functions for anything outside of the medical discussion of prophylactics. You'll, maybe. Whatever. Anyway, yes. So, so we spent You bought some the, parts for the Subaru in the no-no aisle at the, at the store. Yeah. <laughs> what a way this is going, Andrew. <laughs> no, so we spent... Uh, he had it kind of diagnosed at an outside shop. They said it was had low compression in cylinder two... It's the front. It was the driver's side, driver's bank, side, driver's front. side front bank. Yeah. yeah. It's apparently a cylinder two. I would have thought that was one, but well, in a Montero, that's like number. That's not number one there either. It's on the passenger side. It's number one. All right. So, so who knows? cylinder two, whatever. The point is that's the cylinder that was bad. Yeah, and it was correct. So on Sunday we spent almost twelve hours taking the engine out because it is impossible to do heads in a turbo Subaru. In the car. Yeah, especially a dual cam car. If you tell me you're wrong, I will fight you because... We won't fight you, but we will definitely challenge you to do it. Yes. Like, show us your... Without damaging things to the point of not using them, without smashing the frame rails out of the way. Yeah, because I've spoken and, with Subaru Techs uh, at my new place, or former Subaru Techs, and they're like, no, you can't do that. Like, you just take it out. Right. And the reason that, you know, we say it took 12 hours, it didn't take us 12 hours to pull the motor out of the car. Uh, collectively. It, it, collectively with all of the time we spent, you know, because there were like five of us working on the car. So it was like the too many cooks in the kitchen scenario. Occasionally, yeah. Where we kept bumping into each other, obviously. Um, and also it's a New England car, so we had to deal with a lot of rusted hardware. It wasn't too bad, though. There was a few pieces, which, but it, it talk about not too bad. If you spend 15 minutes on a bolt five times, you know, you get over an hour of wasted time taking bolts off. So. It's true, but we only broke three bolts. Yeah, we didn't break many bolts. And one of them was in a valve cover. Yeah, oh, well, thanks. you put steel bolts into an aluminum valve cover. The, and it was the one together. And it was the one right below the turbo, so it was a lot of heat there. Too. Reminds me, I got to write that down. I got to order that one. Yeah, I ordered. Plus, we also had to tap it out of the head. Actually, no, the machine shop built right that. that. Yeah. So I, um, we got the whole thing out. Wasn't too bad. 
No, it wasn't bad. And if, if now that we've done it once, it wouldn't be twelve hours to do it next time. It was just no, it a lot go- of exploratory. There was no books involved. It was just what do we need to do to remove this as one lump piece? I I had a good understanding from doing Stephanie's car. I just knew, and we had yeah, a good basics, yeah. and we had a good understanding from doing the turbo in Jordan's car. What we had to take apart. Correct. So we had a pretty good idea. Uh, but once it's now it's out, it's on the stand. We pop the heads out. Sure enough, I posted some pictures earlier in this week that uh, number two cylinder, the exhaust valve, one of them is just missing the edge of it. So it's just leaking yeah, by. Like a straight little line cut off of it. Yeah. So no compression, just running real poorly. Which is funny because I guess because it's an exhaust valve maybe. It didn't run super poorly off idle. For a chunk that big to have been missing. Yeah, but it wasn't running great. No, no, it was idling funny, and it would, it would stumble on initial acceleration, but once you were on throttle, it was almost like nothing was wrong. So it's more common for an exhaust valve to go because they run hotter. Oh, than, especially on a turbo, too. Yeah, yeah, they just run hotter than an intake valve because they don't have they don't have cold, so to speak, fuel washing over them to cool them off. Right, so... Unfortunately, he had just done a timing belt in this car like less than a year ago. Yeah. So we'll get to the timing belt again, you know, because we're out. Obviously, we're not going to put the old timing belt back in it. No, we're, we're, we're going to leave the water pump, though, and all the pulleys. They, they're in good shape. Yeah, they're all, everything in there is like 6,000 miles. Yeah. It's brand new stuff. Yeah. But the belt, I mean, you got it out, you may as well replace it. Yeah. So we're just ordering some parts, having the heads done at the machine shop. Yeah. Um, because that's the thing. It didn't overheat or anything, so they should be fine. Like, it should be a real yeah. quick just yeah. valve job. And like we said, this is a common, apparently, occurrence in these two 5 turbos. Yeah. Which I didn't really know. I wasn't really aware of. Is that the same motor in the STIs? Is it a common failure in the SDI, or is it different valves? STIs might different? have different valves. Okay. The engine's a little bit different. It's the same displacement. Right. I know the turbo was significantly smaller in the Forester, I noticed. Yeah. Like, after working on Jordan's STI yeah. and then going to the Forester XT, you can physically see how much smaller the turbo is. Well, it makes a little less power. The 2.5 will make, make you more torque. That's why it's in the Forester. It's a heavy, bigger, heavier car. That's why they put it in the STI, to make more torque and more horsepower. You know, if you went to a w, WRXs, are two liters. Yeah, and they're pretty much bulletproof. <laughs> yeah. And, until you start modifying them, that's when they start to fail. Right, so. and this car's a stock car, so it shouldn't. It's got 175,000 miles on it, so. It, uh, it's maintained, though. It's a very it well-maintained car. And I think it was just age or whatever. Yeah, it's just strange. The design and I guess it's, it's a common problem, so it's a design flaw. And I wouldn't even say it's age or anything. It's just if it happens that often, something's wrong with the it's car. It's just what they do. But if you got 175,000 miles out of it, and if, if, it, if it takes 175,000 more miles for it to happen again... The problem I have with that is that it's an 05. Yeah. And in my head, I can't wrap around the difference between an 05 with 175,000 miles and a brand new 05. Because to me, that is such a new car. Even though I know it's not. That's just me being an idiot. It's 12 years old. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying that I have a hard time wrapping my head around an 05 being an old car that needs engine work. from 2000 and up, to me, seems like a new car. Right. If you told me you went out and you bought a 2000, I'd be like, oh, you need a reliable there, daily driver. And there, somebody else would be like, why did you buy a 17-year-old car to drive every that, day? Yeah, but there's a definite, there's some delineation between the year, like in the late 90s, like 99, 2000, where cars became like real modern. I would even turn that back five years, just to 95. It's what, the OBD2. When everything went to OBD2? Everything OBD2 went up to me is a new car. Because that's when cars got, like, less maintenance and more reliability, I think, is with, See, I think with two, OBD. I think 2000 is the cutoff. But. To, to me, there's no difference between a 95, you know, Dodge Neon and a 2000 Dodge Neon. Yeah. You know, or a 95 Chevy pickup and a 2000 Chevy pickup. They're kind of the same truck. Kind of the same car. Whatever. It's all, they're all just – I think 95 is the year just because it became, you know, the standard of – you have a problem with a car, we can diagnose it easily now. Yeah. You know, everything's more reliable. You don't worry about stuff as much. Service intervals seem to get longer because of that. I think 95 is the year. I don't, I'm see, not going to argue the point. I don't I think, mean, well, see, I don't think that because we're living in, uh, so, yes, we're out of the aughts decade, right? Yeah, the, the 2000s? Aughts. Yeah. 20 six. So, yeah. So, and now we're in 2017. So anything with... A, a model year that starts the 2000 
doesn't seem that old. Oh, I guess not. So does it say eight, does it make the, the two teens? How we call this now? Twenty tens. I don't know. Twenty tens. No? Twenty teens. I don't know what this is called. I don't know. It's a good question. The generation didn't have a name. Yeah. Sorry, guys. The aughts. That's pretty terrible, though. Yeah, aughts was terrible too. Uh, I agree with you on the nomenclature. So yeah, saying that it's from two thousands makes it seem new because we were force fed. You know, Y two K was the coming of the new world. You know, what yeah. I mean? or the ending of the old world, the ending of all the world. But yeah, so we kind of have that. But I think if to me, like I said, a ninety five and up car to me is just a totally modern car. Like my wife Deb drives a Saab. It's a nineteen ninety seven Saab. To me, it's a brand new car. It's because you drive a seventy seven regularly. That's beside the point. To me, her 97 Saab is such a modern car that I don't even think about it because it just runs, it drives, it goes. It's 97. It's a brand new car. To her, and I don't think I really realized this until more recently when she's talking about buying a new car, it's an old piece of crap. Even though it runs every day and doesn't have any major issues, it's just an old piece of crap because she's not in the same car mindset that I am. And she's like, in 97, I was in high school. And now I'm not in high school, and like we have a teenage daughter, and I'm still driving a car that was around when I was in high school. I'm yeah. Like, oh, maybe we should get you a new car. <laughs> yeah. Like I was looking to get my license when my Montero was new, the '99. Yeah, I, and I'd already had my license yeah. for three years. Yeah. So it's it, any maybe that's why '95 is my cutoff year, because like '95, '96, I started driving, and anything built from that point forward is just hey, these are normal cars. Yeah, when I'm. And like when you bought your talent and I got my talent, they were only like nine year old car and then an eleven year old car. Yeah, I was nine years old when I bought it. <laughs> and now it's twenty seven years old, which is kinda weird. But adjusted for inflation, buying a three thousand dollar nine year old car in nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Is that the same equivalent to buying See, I don't, a six thousand dollar nine year old car in twenty seventeen? I, I don't think cars are as cheap as they used to be used cars. Well, new Am cars aren't that? No, new cars aren't either. That's which is part of it. Yeah, the used car market has been kind of saturated with leasing. Yes. So there's a lot of people that buy cars every two years. So there's more cars being you know turned. Although over. I did see, I think the, the drive posted something about cars that are like under five grand right now. Okay. And a lot of them are like 2013s, 2014s, but they were like cheap cars to begin with. 2013s under five grand. Yeah. Wow. What can you buy from 2013 is under five? I know I one of them stood out because it was a it was a Mirage, a 2014 Mirage with 50k for like 3500 dollars or something silly. That's not a bad purchase. You know, I'm not you know recommending everybody go out and buy sub five thousand dollar new cars, but anyway, Andrew's now looking the article I am, up I'm because it makes yeah. terrible radio and. I can't carry the conversation because I wasn't ready for him to pick his phone up and start searching no. for the article. Um, but yeah, I guess I could see that. I mean, a Mirage brand new. That car was like eight grand brand new. So you could, you could get them out the door for like 10, couldn't you? Yeah. So if you get the car out the door for 10, it's going to be less by the time it's what, it's 13, so it's four years old. Yeah. So that makes sense. And that car is not going to hold its value anyway because it's a bottom rung car. Is this true? Buy one now. Save it now. There won't be any left in four years. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like my brown colt, one of, like, you know, very few left in the future. Yes. Being as a brown colt is technically a mirage. So, anyway. It's I, not, I Just like it's not even there. I can't imagine spending $3,500 for a 2013 car now, but that's kind of, that's kind of, a, like, I don't know, appetizing, not appetizing is the right word, but kind of like an intriguing thought. Like, if I bought a 2013 car, I would think I would never need to buy another car in my entire life. Because <laughs> I'd be like, that's it. It's 2013. It's brand new. <laughs> I've never had need another car ever. This is true. Especially if I'm driving 95 cars now and 77 cars now. So, all right. If you can't find the article, you should probably stop looking. Cause no, I can keep talking. I'll this, find it. This airtime is, is precious to us. So, all right. We covered. I'm going to fix the connector on the Montero. We pulled the motor out of the Subaru. Actually, we were still having the conversation of the motor on the Subaru. Um, again, pardon us, everybody. We don't have show notes, so we're going off the rails again. Um, yeah. Weirdest part about pulling the Subaru motor apart. It's a dual overhead cam. Yep. So it had 
was a little strange issue trying to pull off the cam gears. Like cam gears, cam pulleys, I should say. Yeah, the belt. Cam sprockets. Yeah, cam sprockets. Sprockets. So that was a little difficult to pull those off because there's no way to hold torque on them and they're put on there to a quite a high number of torque. There's no way to hold them in place when you're trying to un- untorque them. Oh, yeah. Well, we didn't have the tool. It's a special tool. It's a special tool, yes. Yeah. So we were trying to figure out how I've to do it without the special tool. ordered some so that we can torque them correctly. Correct. Instead of doing it the way but we untorque them. <laughs> yeah, you guys uh, looked it up on the internets and yes. found a way apparently to brace it with the timing belt. We found the cheat way. Take, so you take the old timing belt yeah. and we wrapped it around enough pulleys um, that had teeth on them. And in a few different places, we pulled it really, really tight. It was like three vice grips involved. And put three vice grips on it close to the pulley so it would hold the pulleys in place while we untorqued. Well, the... Squeezing on the belt. Yeah, exactly. So that seemed to work out. That's why we needed a new belt. Well, I think it was kind of... We were gonna... He said he was going to replace it anyway. So yeah. we're like, all right, then we'll just do this to pull it apart. So then... Speaking of which, we need that bolt too. Which bolt? The one that holds the center uh, belt cover on. Oh, I did get that one. Oh, the one we, the one we bent with our vice grip. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, I get that one. And then, um, oh, and then, so it's a, um, what do I want to call it? Hex drive? The uh, head bolts? No. The, the, the cam bolt. rocket bolts. Okay. And we threw, it was a 10 mil hex oh, drive. Yeah, we busted the thing. Well, it was a 10 mil uh, Craftsman. With this, like, kind of tapered shank to it. It wasn't full shank, like 10 mil all the way to the socket part. Right. So then Joe went at it with the, it's like a two and a half foot breaker bar. It's a pretty big breaker bar. And it just shattered. Yeah. It made a big spark, and then the breaker bar came down and smashed my hand. So yeah, it was definitely not fun. I mean, it just, like, just sheared the um, socket right off, and it actually twisted inside the chrome. So then we grabbed... A snap on a 10 mil one and it was fine. However, earlier in the day, I managed to take the 14 mil snap on socket and break it with your bare hands. Yeah, it cracked it like the Liberty Bell, like, whew, yeah. like right through. And it must have just been fatigue because the 14 mil from working on Japanese cars yeah, used, used a lot. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah, 12, 13, 14. That. And that's the second time that's been replaced because it already didn't match the original the snap-on set. set. So at least it's not a big deal. You're not breaking out the original band. It's already a replace it member. So yeah. We'll get over it. It's it's kind of like OCD, like infuriating, where it, they don't match They, they change the design, yeah. You yeah. have to go on eBay and, and find that circa 1986 14 mil to match the rest of the set. Yeah, well, I don't know why they changed the, like... Why did they change the set? Because that was the set that your father bought. And your father probably bought it in the 70s or 80s. Yeah. So at some point, they're going to have modernized the design a little bit. I mean, at least all. they lifetime guarantee it. But. Yeah, which is awesome. But, I mean, you can't. I never heard the end of it because we broke like a 12 mil wrench and the script doesn't match. So now every time I look. No, no, no. Is that we lost in the heater channel to the Volkswagen? No, yeah, we found it, though. Later on, after we bought a new one. Wasn't that that one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was that, too, and I also broke a 12 mil box wrench. That was funny, too, because we were working on our friend's air-cooled Volkswagen. I forget what we were doing, brakes? Yeah, it used, it's German, so it used 13 mil. Yeah, so we had a 13 mil socket. No, no, a uh, wrench. Yeah, box wrench, yeah. And it just disappeared. Yeah. And, like, a week later, he traced down the source of a rattle in his car, and it was the, the wrench in the it, heater channel. Yeah. <laughs> we don't even know how it got there. A new, typical New England rotted-out Volkswagen, I guess, but... yeah. Yeah, there was this wrench. Just nope. Oh, there's the wrench. I guess we did have it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. But the twelve, when you look at it, the script is different. The snap-on script. So, so maybe that's what you should get for Father's Day. You should go on eBay and find the correct snap-on script twelve millimeter wrench. I guess there was a big deal with snap-on. One of the techs was telling me uh, when they took off, even though they were still made in the USA, they took off the made in the USA off a lot of their products because they were trying to sell them overseas oh, for okay. some reason. And, like, it upset a lot of people because that's – you're buying Snap-on stuff. You want – America. Yeah, but you want the main USA Snap-on stuff because yeah, they, do, of, they do warranty it. Speaking of, it's Flag Day today. So it is. We are being patriotic talking yes. about our made in America. Um, I have a question. A little off topic but still automotive related mm-hmm. and related to that comment. Um, did somebody tell Jeep owners today they had to put a flag on their truck? Did you notice that today? Isn't that every day? 
I, I see was, so many Jeeps like that. It, it was more excessive today. I saw at least six Wranglers flying, like, huge six-and-a-half-foot American flags hey, on the back. Hey, tweets are on. No, I'm not complaining about I it. I prefer I mean, hey, to it's... keep mine on my house. Right, <laughs> where it doesn't get damaged. Yeah. Um, I also have one hanging on my house. I'm not yeah. saying I'm anti-American here by any means. Um, I'm just, I thought it was strange that there were so many Jeep Wranglers today. More so. I mean, you see it normally. You'll see a Wrangler here and there or a pickup truck here and there, but... I didn't know if it was significant today, if there was some yeah, like, flag day. credo that on flag day you have to fly a flag from the spare tire carrier mm-hmm. of your Jeep Wrangler. I don't know. I mean, whatever. It's not a big deal. It's interesting. But anyway, happy flag day, everybody. Yes. Or day after, if you listen to Thursday after you release this. Yeah. So made in America, snap on tools, still made in America. That's the right. script is gone. Yeah, because unfortunately, I don't know if you can get Craftsman stuff still at the store. I haven't been to a Sears in a long time. Yeah. There's a standalone Sears, like, hardware store in Gloucester. I assume you can get it there because it's just it's a Sears hardware store. Yeah. So you must be able to get it there. It doesn't matter. Where I work now, we have a Snap-on dealer. I'll just get that socket warrantied. Yeah. As long as it's a good Snap-on dealer and he's easy about it. It should be. Yeah. A- I've only had a problem once with a Snap-on tool. This is so old. We don't make this anymore. Well, you can give me something that's equivalent to it, because <laughs> these are all lifetime warrantied. Yeah. It was some screwdriver thing. All we make is now longer than this. Like, that's fine. All right, yeah, whatever. Screwdriver. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care that so, much. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to put that connector back in the Montero. We'll go back to that. Um, what I'm going to do, I was waiting to get that connector so I can get the, make sure the truck's running. Uh, and then I'm finally going to pull the radiator from the 89. I keep talking about this. Three weeks later. Yes. Um, it's weird because it only leaks sometimes. I keep and I, I keep checking the water level, the cool level. A heat expansion thing. Maybe. Because sometimes I'll park it and I'll come out and there'll be a puddle. Other times there won't be anything. Because there's no coolant left. No, I keep, whenever whenever the truck cools <laughs> off, I pop the radiator cap off and look, nope, still cooling in the radiator, top of the radiator. See, that's how we know that's not a modern car built after 95. Because so you have to open the hood every time you park the car. <laughs> that's how I define modern car and old car. <laughs> in fact, before I leave here tonight, I should probably check the oil in my car because I didn't check it before I left. Yes. No, it's always good. So, and then um, what I'm going to do just to shake the truck down a bit is I'll swap the wheels and tires from the 89 onto it just to drive around town. This is putting the tires on the 99 just to kind of... Make sure everything all still yeah, go before, before I start ordering new tires for them. Correct. Plus, you want to make sure before you really start pushing the sale again because you have you kind of let it fall to the wayside. The sale of your eighty nine. Yeah, I want the radiator fixed so it's all set for someone. Yep. And then I plus you want to make sure the other truck is one hundred percent ready. Exactly. To go. And I, and I don't want to spend five hundred dollars on tires if I need to spend money on something, on something else. else. Yeah, exactly. So. Especially where worst case scenario, if you do need to spend five hundred dollars on something else, you can borrow the tires off my radiator for a while if you need to. Yeah. So I'm not worried about that. Well, anyway. my radiator's obviously not going anywhere for a little while. <laughs> Speaking of three weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we do some uh scale project cars? I haven't touched a thing, have you? No, I more than meant you found uh the Hot Wheels cars. Oh, yeah, those aren't really project cars because they're just in a package. Scale project cars. It fits in. Um, brand, fits with the theme. Brand new set of Hot Wheels cars. Pretty much just came out, I'd say, within the last two weeks. Yeah, I don't know how you find a whole you found a whole set. You got real lucky. I did. I just It was timing. I had to go to Target for something else, and I went over and saw, and it was... Target seems to have stuff. Yeah. The local was, Toys R Us has nothing. No, it's barren. Um, there was one whole set. I think it's called it Track Day. Yep. Track day. It is track day. Uh, uh, I left it in the garage. Or race day. It's called track day. Okay. No, race day. Track day. Race day. They had one of each. There used to be a race day, now it's a track day. I think it's track day. Um, either way, it's called track day, Hot Wheels. Um, there's three cars, five cars, excuse me. One of them is a Porsche 962. One of them is a Mazda RX-3. Um an Acura NSX. It was a long tail a 911 Porsche 935. Too, right? Yeah. Um, and is there one more car? And it's a oh, Porsche 914. The Porsche 914. It's not called Track Day. Track Day was the no. Was the other one's called Race Day. Oh, Race Day. Okay, because yeah. they're race cars. Correct. Also, the Track Day ones. 
I think they just already used it and needed to change the day. Maybe it's not called race days. Yeah, race day. Anyway, so I found the whole set. So they, they typically do five cars in these sets? They're all five car sets. It's, it's the uh, car culture is the yep. name of the series. And there's been a few different ones from they had the Japanese classics one and they had the pickup trucks one. Those those cost more, right? Like three bucks? Yeah, they're like three fifty. Yeah. Because they have but they have rubber tires. Metal body, metal chassis, and two piece wheels and tires. So a plastic wheel with a rubber tire. Do they do the uh what do you call it? Tamp what's the Tampo? Tampo? They don't have full tampo all around, but they usually have three side tampo. So they'll have which is which is markings. So have markings on the left, right, and top, or front, back, and top. Um, it's the five dollar ones where they start getting into the full mm-hmm. detail all around. So yeah, it's called Race Day is the series. Yeah. Um, I found the whole set. Pretty yep. excited. Only found one extra one for you. I found two of the RX threes, which is a cool one too. So I gave you that to you. And you found um, me an extra Gretty nine six two. And then later on, I found yeah. in the store the only one they had laying on the sh- on the shelf was the race day uh, Porsche nine six two with the Trust Grady sponsorship. So I bet those are like ten and twelve and fifteen bucks on eBay already. Yeah, probably because people are hoarders and try to make money off other collectors, I guess. Um, so anyway, the nine six two is an entirely new casting. Um, but it also has new wheels on it, which are really cool. Yes. They're a like a turbo fan style. Mm-hmm. So that's going to hopefully find its way into a bunch of Hot Wheels. Yeah. <laughs> They're a really cool wheel. And I hope to take some apart someday in the future and put them on other Hot Wheels cars because they look really good. Yep. So I did find a second one of those. Um, that car ran um, in the Fuji race in like 87, I think. Yep. Game in third. So, did not run Le Mans. Le Mans. Yes, excuse me. The, Le, the, Le Mans. The Porsche did not run Le Mans, man. Yeah. Yeah, the Por- Pontiac Le Mans. The Porsche did not run Le Mans. Yeah. So, as far as I can tell, I'm having a little hard time. I was trying to funny research. funny how you, you definitely, like, it's a Pontiac Le Mans, right? <laughs> it would be a Le Mans. But it's everybody says Le Mans. Race. Wait, I know. We're in, a, we're in America with a bunch of other stupid Americans. Everything's Le Mans. Way to win the audience, Brad. <laughs> Whatever. If our audience doesn't know the difference between Le Mans and Le Mans, and they're apparently just like me because I screwed it up myself. So, whatever. Porsche. Yeah, I have been schooled on that many times. I didn't say Porsche and a Jaguar. Yes. Anyway, talk about Porsches and Jaguars all day. But which, speaking of Le Mans. Right, which is why we were trying to the research this earlier. Yes. I was um, hoping it would be a good se- clean segue, which is not. It's not. Crashed Nothing and burned. about this episode has been clean, so no. we'll go with that anyway. Anyway, Lama is this weekend, so hopefully you're going to be watching some of that. When we're not working on Joe's Subaru, I'll probably actually have Radio we'll Lama it, yeah. on instead. Yeah. I like that idea. We'll listen to it while we're working. Yep. Because, I mean, it does go for 24 hours. And hopefully the repair of the car does not go for 24 hours. No. But uh, it should be interesting to see. I hope the balance of performance is better for the Corvettes. I'd like to see them really battle with the GT, the four GTs. Absolutely. I don't want to see any one manufacturer walk away with it. Yeah, no runaway victories. Uh, it's really fun, you know, because I don't really love any one manufacturer in particular. But it, I just want to see... Because there's no Mitsubishis out there. <laughs> well, I just want to see cars battle each other i want to see racing yeah no that's what makes that's what draws you to racing yeah. is, the, is the door handle to door handle battles and the passing and the you know jockeying for position because and, modern endurance racing has turned almost into sprint racing it's most of the cars will make it the full ray so it's interesting to see them actually race yeah and you know it's better than like the formula one follow the leader kind of racing you yeah know, it's more of a it's more entertaining to watch. And Plus, I like, because they have the multiple classes on the track at the same time, there's always that, you know, extra visual of having to dodge traffic while battling for position. And I there is no more Audi. Okay. So you've got Porsche and then Toyota. In the main? In the, in the top level, top yeah. Top level? So it'd be nice to That's see. That's just two brands? I believe so. There's no GM product up there? Cadillac? No. They wouldn't run... Uh, that'd be like GT1 or something. Hmm, okay. 
probably butchering that. Anybody that no, knows they, anything is like, Rrr. oh, they changed all the categories. They recently, did. did they not? Yeah, because it used to be. Um, it's LMP, not the same. It used to be Lamar prototype. LMP was the was the top level class, but it's not. Anymore. It's LMP one is top level. Okay, so they're. I mean, Toyota like came so close last year. Like, I know, so so close. And uh, I hope they. I mean, I I wish they'd won because they like worked really hard for it. But then again, the Porsches also worked really hard for it, and we're right there. It's a Nissan, too. so. Nissan's running that. I thought they gave up on that. Uh, it doesn't look like it's a factory Nissan team. Yeah. Um, it's by Colas Racing Team. Yeah. Um, it's an Enso chassis with a Nismo engine. So the VRX 30A, 3 liter turbo. Well, V6. it's going to be real tough to beat someone like Porsche. Oh, well, yeah. I'm sure, Toyota, I'm sure they're going to be. Who throw millions of dollars at it. And they're both running hybrid setups, and this yeah. is running a traditional gas motor. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm sure it's not going to be a, you know, huge um, effort by them. I'm sure it's more of a, hey, there's only two cars running. We guaranteed a third. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but they're probably running three cars each, four cars each. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Let's say how many cars are they running? Uh, LMP1. Porsche's got two cars. Uh, Toyota's got three cars. And by Coley's has one car. All right. So, so three bullets in the gun. So to speak for Toyota, three chances. Yeah, the podium. I'm sure they will. The podium for sure. I just don't know what uh, what car will probably um, the number eight car because it's driven by Sebastian Buemi, Anthony Davidson, and uh, Nakajima. Those were the that's the team that's the car that finished second last year. Is it not, or broke at the last minute last year? Is it not? I believe so. Yeah, so that's probably the car to watch. Toyota Gazoo Racing. Yep, so that should be pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure what else other racing is going on. It doesn't really matter because anything else that goes on this weekend will be overshadowed yeah, I'm by sure what's going on. Fox Sports 1 will screw us over again and only show, like, bits and pieces of it. Okay, so four GTs? You're talking about Corvettes? Yep. There are no Corvettes running. Yeah, there are. LMGTE? No. LMGTE is where the four GT is. And they're running against the Ferrari 488s, the Aston Martin Vantage, and the 911 RSRs. And that's it. C7Rs aren't running? Nope. That's weird. Nope, not according to the official Le Mans, Le Mans 2017 calendar here. Weird. So there will be no Corvettes. So There definitely had promotional pictures from there. It uh, seems strange to me, too, but... So it'll be Ford against Ferrari, which is tradition, mm-hmm. and then 911 and Aston Martin for that new Vantage GTE, which is a ridiculously cool car. So I don't know. Le Mans. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google that real quick as we do more googling on air here. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, I didn't have anything else to go over. Yeah, I don't really either. I think we had kind of a, a slow week with everything else. Um, well, it was mostly consumed by Joe's engine, engine work, yeah, which is fine because uh, shops wanted way too much money. So yeah, it was like a five thousand dollar repair because a lot of shops just wanted to take it out, put it in the trash, put a new one in. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with the bottom end of the engine. So Correct. It just needs heads, and because um, we have more skills than money, it's we can Sometimes. help times. <laughs> 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 we can help people, uh, especially our very close friends, fix things uh, more often than not. It's easier to help people by just using your hands, I guess. Yeah, well, it's the old school way. It's the barter system. Yeah. Now Joe owes us something of equal value. Oh, I've, got a, I've got a lot of yard work. Yeah, exactly. yeah good <laughs> luck with that. Huh. I, I'm getting conflicting information here about this Corvette thing. We'll have to do a little more research and look into this. But on the Le Mans site, the car is not listed. But on the Corvette racing site, yeah, it is listed. Yeah, but it's not. But it is. So anyway, I'll figure that out afterwards. So, all right, let's bring this in. Absolutely, bring it across the finish line. And next week, we'll definitely go back to having a. Um, show notes because it certainly helps the pacing along. I think we're gonna 
uh, I don't want to give it away, but I think we'll try to have some guests next week or a guest and okay. then maybe a guest after. Excellent. We'll do a, oh, uh, we'll yeah, do a theme yeah, yeah, for this yeah, month. Theme. So. I forgot about that. Yes. So we'll, we'll surprise we'll you with to that. ask those guests if they want to do it too. Yeah. I haven't even asked them yet. Yeah. So anyway. They kind of owe us. Or we owe them. Yeah. Depends on the week. They'll enjoy it. Yes, they will. And you'll enjoy their tales of woe. Yeah. Um, so. Do you have an important announcement to make at all? Or are you going to hold on there next week? No, I'm getting there. Okay. So uh, you can now, uh, shortly, you will find my writing on the blog Right Foot Down. Sweet. So rightfootdown.com. Yes, I am going to be a contributor for Right Foot Down. I am no longer worthy to sit across the table from you because you'll be a published author. Uh, yeah. Semi, semi-pro. <laughs> Isn't that just an amateur? Yeah. I don't like saying amateur, though. Semi-pro sounds cooler. Yes. You'll be writing for a legitimate automotive website. Yes. So that's cool. So look for Andrew Pascarella in the byline of yep. Right Foot Down. So you already have one piece in the can, so to speak. Yes. It's just waiting to get published up. Mm-hmm. So. And then uh, hopefully maybe we'll do some... Uh, there was talk about new car reviews. Oh, that'd be really cool. It would be really cool. Uh, some other stuff, you know, stories. <laughs> new car review. Here's Andrew's new car review. This is a 2000 Camaro <laughs> SS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait a second. It's 2017. This is the new oh, eight, got it. I got $100 it. Craigslist special I bought. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to, to pigeonhole you into only reviewing $800 Craigslist cars, but, you know, as we discussed at length earlier, that... Uh, your brand new cars are a That's little off kilter from other people's brand new cars. So this car's got Bluetooth. Holy crap! Yeah, amazing. <laughs> um, Can I type my whole review through the Bluetooth system? Yeah. So yeah, right foot down. Look for Andrew there. Uh, a couple of other people we know have written there or currently right there, and a good group of guys. And it's a good blog to follow, and some inter- interesting, inter- interesting information and. Good articles on there, plus some nice photography. Yes. Which we're going to see some of your photography there, too, I hope. Yep. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Give us more excuses to go places. Yes. Like, what are you doing this weekend? I'm going to here for this. Oh, why? Because Right Foot Town wants me to. Yes. So now it's job, so you can get away with it. Mm-hmm. So that's excellent. Yep. So that should be cool. Um, as always, you can follow this podcast on Instagram, Auto Op Topic. And you can see pictures of uh, busted Subaru engines or whatever weird projects or... Or the owner of the Subaru standing inside the engine bay looking up like he's Jesus at the light coming into the windows. It was either that or I have conquered all. Yeah, one or the other. (laughs) We had to make him stand inside the engine bay because that's what you do. That's a requisite photo. When you take the engine out of your car, you have to stand in the engine bay. Correct. It's just you have to do it. It's just a, a thing. Yes. There's also a picture floating around of Andrew trying to get a bolt sitting on top of the engine, which I don't think I published there, but no, it can. It's not flattering to me, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> flattering to you is not the entertainment factor for the rest <laughs> of our audience. Um, I wish we had better Wi-Fi in the garage because I just run Facebook Live like as we we're doing it. Can't we just do it through the 4G? Uh. I don't have unlimited data on my phone. Well, I Mr. do. Mr. Fancy Pants. So let's do it up. Did I say data? I don't know what you said. I think but... I did. Anyway, once again, you can follow Auto Off Topic on Instagram. You can follow Auto Off Topic Podcast on Facebook. You can, of course, listen to us on iTunes and Google Music. And if you would like to I leave... Feel like we can stop saying that. A review. That you can say. But I mean, if they're hearing this... Hey. I feel like they figured it out already. Ah. Huh. I guess so. Like, you can find this podcast to listen to. Uh, I think they already did, Andrew. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair point. But However, do rate, review, and share. Yes, please. Um, oh, if you want to follow me, uh, that would be on Race and Anger on Instagram. Uh, I do have a Race and Anger page on Facebook uh, I don't post there too often because I haven't been to too many events yet this year. Uh, of course, you can go to rightfootdown.com uh, for a great automotive blog site. Yes, which will now feature the musings of Andrew Pascarella. That's right. Your auto off topic yes. post. Um, Can't get enough Andrew? No. Follow him here. Yes. Um, Brad, where can we find you? 
Uh, Vintage Imports of New England on all of the regular social medias, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Vintage Imports of NE.com. You can also find my personal Instagram of TSISS350, which I will say I asked a question of another podcast a week or so ago. Yeah. And when they read my personal Instagram name off, they figured it out. Yeah. So that made me happy. Took him a second because first they're like, "This is this is three five zero says." He's like, "TSI, I get it." So that was cool. Um, and please, I mentioned it last week. My wife wrote a book, and it's now available on Amazon, on Kindle, and in paperback form for the high high price of five dollars. So please pick that up and read that with your children. Um, it's a cool little kids book called Yankee the Fish. By D.A. Flanagan. And of course, she also has an adult book that you can also pick up, right? She does. Uh, Maddox Pike, also by D.A. Flanagan, but that's definitely not to read with the kids. No, that is a what, mystery thriller? Yeah, it's kind of like a, a dark mystery. Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to describe so it. So that's what you read after the kids go to bed. Correct. And then you have nightmares yourself, but your <laughs> kids don't, so it's okay. But yeah, so D.A. Flanagan on Amazon, she has two books. Yankee the Fish is a cute kid's book, and Maddox Pike is a dark serial killer thriller. Pretty good. Absolutely. All right. Keep your cars analog. <laughs>